Hello my fellow scientists, I'm Peter Allen and I want to talk to you about the all iron battery. For those of you who are new here, I have been working for the last two years on building an all iron electrochemical cell or battery that stores renewable energy or any kind of energy in a cheap, renewable and safe cell. A chemistry that's essentially not acid or base, that has no terribly toxic components and that will be able to charge and discharge many, many times. And we're getting close. So let's talk about how that works. So the way the iron battery works is you have an iron anode here in blue and that oxidizes to iron two plus. That releases electrons that have to go somewhere. In this case, we put them through a piece of graphite foil, through a piece of carbon felt and into an iron three plus, iron three salt, and reduce it to iron two plus. There's a separator to allow charge transfer so that positive ions can also migrate across to balance the, the electrostatic charge. If you assemble one of these cells according to this chemistry, you get something like the thing on the right and connecting up the voltmeter gives us about 0.5 all the way up to about 0.8 volts depending on the specific construction and chemistry. Here's more specifically how we construct that little cell. We fold up a paper membrane, we saturate it with a polymer, usually natheon, and then we put a graphite current collector outside that little paper pouch. The paper pouch gets electrolyte, the graphite felt gets the iron three salt, and it builds a cell that you can then charge and discharge many, many times. Uh, the best cells we have have actually been able to charge and discharge 3,000 times. It's a nice stable chemistry. If you assemble six of these little cells in series, you get enough potential to actually do something. So that gives us about three volts, two volts under load. That's enough to light up this little green LED. So if you look down here, we've got six cells all wired together. They produce enough voltage to light up this green LED and they do so for hours and hours. So 10 days or plus, but they still only produce something like two milliamps of current. And it's really small, barely enough for an LED. So that, well, let's scale up. Let's build a big 200 mil cell. We fold up a much bigger piece of paper. We get a whole bunch of iron and carbon and we build this big Ziploc bag cell. They end up looking like this. So it's 200 milliliters in volume. We're hoping to put six of those together and that would be potentially big enough to run something larger. But unfortunately the potential drops under load and we're only able to really push about 20 milliamps through that larger cell. So why is it? What is it that causes the potential drop? You can think of this as an internal resistor, something resistive in the battery. To illustrate that, you've got this simple schematic where you have a battery here. It's going to push current through this one ohm resistor. The circuit is open. You get one volt of potential. When you close the circuit, Ohm's law says one ohm, one volt, we should get one ampere of current. But when you close the circuit, you suddenly see this big drop in potential, 0.1 volt. You only push 1.1 amps through that one ohm resistor. Why? How do you explain this? The way that's usually thought of is modeled is a internal resistor, hence the term internal resistance. So it's as if there is a nine ohm resistor in series with an ideal one volt cell. So that one volt cell is trying to push one volt, but most of that potential is sort of used up by this big resistor that's internal to the apparent battery. And so the final current is only 0.1 amps, despite the fact that the ideal battery would maintain its voltage. All batteries have internal resistance. If you try to draw too much current too quickly from too small a cell, it just can't keep up and internal resistance becomes significant. In our particular cell, internal resistance is really bad. So we've been trying to resolve this is by constructing a really tiny cell. So it's only about oh, 0.2 milliliters and the whole cell fits in these two little holes in this acrylic. You sandwich that up with the graphite current collectors and then clip it into little binder clips. And these little holes are full of the electrolyte and the iron or iron salt. So the cell, the tiny micro cell looks like this, sort of with a human for scale. Uh, the, it breaks down as you can see into a whole bunch of little acrylic pieces. And this has allowed us to move a lot faster in testing a bunch of different possible hypotheses about what is actually causing the high internal resistance. We came to the belief that what's really limiting the current is the charge transfer from the carbon felt to the iron three salt. That iron three salt is actually insoluble. So when we make iron sulfate, which is our best iron salt we have, it makes these little crystal precipitates and getting electrons into or out of these little cruddy 
iron sulfate particles is actually really slow. So you pass current into the carbon felt, that current has to reduce something like a soluble iron 3 plus, that becomes iron 2 plus, and that has to diffuse around until it finds some iron 3 to dump its charge into, and that recycles it to iron 3 again. But this shuttle is really slow to get charge into and out of those iron 3 particles. What did we do to solve that? We bought a whole bunch of conductive carbon black. See the particular type we purchased up at the top. And the idea is that the iron 3, if, if it's in close contact with that conductive carbon, will be able to capture those electrons more efficiently. The shuttle, at the very least, has to move a much shorter distance, or maybe we can even get a little bit of charge transfer directly without that shuttle mechanism. So we're trying that now. So far, that's been about a 4x increase in the total current, but we can maybe do better if we optimize the conditions. So I want to say thank you to all the folks who've been keeping an eye on this project, especially to the folks who funded the crowdfunding campaign. We'll be getting your final report to you as soon as we can. I have not heard back from the publication to whom I submitted, but as soon as we find out about that, we'll be getting word out to the crowdfunding supporters. Uh, so thank you very much to all of you, and we will see you next time.